In this video, we're going to show you how to set up Expo push notifications for Android. And we're going to be using the Firebase Cloud Messaging API V1. If you're using Android push notifications and you're used to using the Cloud Messaging API legacy, this will officially be done away with June 20th of 2024. So you will have no choice but to use the Firebase Cloud Messaging API V1. So that's the version we're going to be using in this video. We're going to be using nativenotify.com to set up our push notifications. The reason is Native Notify lets you stay in managed workflow. As far as I know, nativenotify.com is the only push notification service that works in Expo managed workflow in the most up-to-date versions of Expo. Other push notification services like OneSignal do not work in the most up-to-date version of Expo. OneSignal is stuck in Expo version 44. Nativenotify.com works with the most up-to-date version of Expo, which is currently Expo version 49, as far as I know. And it's just the easiest push notification service to use on the market. All you have to do is download Native Notify, the package, and then copy and paste this into your app, and you're already set up. If you haven't created an account yet, go to nativenotify.com, click this sign up free button. It's free to sign up. There's no credit card required. That should take you to a page like this. Click create an app, choose React Native Expo. Expo. Your first step will be to follow these start here instructions. You can rename your app whatever you want. I'm going to name this my new app. And we'll follow these instructions together. This first step is more of a note. This is if you're using React Native without Expo. These instructions here tell you how to set up Expo in a React Native app. So if you're not currently using Expo, you can still use Native Notify. You would just need to install the Expo modules by following this link here and installing the Expo Expo modules. But if you're already using Expo, you can skip this step and go to step one. Step one, copy these and paste them into your terminal. Here is my Expo app. I'm going to paste that into my terminal. Click return. Step two, import the register in and push token function. Step three, you want to make sure your app is a hook function. If you're not sure what hooks are, you can click this link right here. But it looks like this. It'll say export default function app. If you're using a class component, you can still use native nativenotify.com. You'll just want to come down here, click this, click here to learn how to use native notify in a class component. You'll want to watch this video to follow along. You can also click this link right here to be shown an example of how to use native notify inside of a class component. But if you're already using a hook function, you can go to step four, copy this function, come to the top of your app file, paste that right there. You'll notice your app ID and your app token are already in there for you. Now you should be able to say NPX Expo Start. Open up your app on an Android emulator or on an actual device using the Expo Go app. And you should see this in your console log. It should say you can now send a push notification. You successfully registered your native notify push token. If you see that, that means you know you're ready to send a push notification. Something to note here is you will get a warning if you have not EAS built something before. It'll say you're missing a project ID, which can be found in your app app.json file here. If this is your first time building an app, you'll want to make sure you at least say EAS build and follow either Android or iOS instructions. Do that at least one time, and then it will automatically add a project ID for you to your app.json file, and then that warning will go away. So let's go ahead and send ourselves a push notification just to make sure this is working. In your instructions, you can come down here to step seven, type your test title, test message, and as you can see, it should show up on an Android emulator. And there it is right there. You can also download the Expo Go app from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. And the push notification will show up on your actual phone. So you officially have push notifications set up in development mode for Android. Push notifications now will automatically work in iOS production mode. So you can go ahead and EAS build an iOS app. Make sure to say yes to everything related to push notifications notifications in your terminal and push notifications will just work for your iOS app on the Apple App Store. But for Android, there are some extra steps and we're going to go through those together. If you're on this screen here, you'll notice it'll take you to this screen after you successfully send a push notification. You can come back down here to click documentation. Come over here, click Android. This is how you set up Android production push notifications. We're going to follow these instructions together. So step 
step one is to go to this link here. If you haven't created a Firebase account yet, there will be some steps on the screen you'll need to follow to create a Firebase account. Then it should take you to this screen. You'll want to click add project. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it my new app. Click continue. You can choose if you want Google Analytics in your app or not. I'm going to say no. Click create project. Click continue. That should take you to a page like this with the words project overview in the top left of your screen. Step three, in your project overview page, you should see an Android icon right here. Click on that Android icon. The first thing it asks for is your Android package name. If you come back to the instructions, it says you can find your Android package name in your app.json file in the Android object. It says if you do not see a package property in your Android project, create one that looks like this package org name app name. So I'm going to copy this because my app does not have a package in the app.json file. So you can copy that as an example. Come back to your app, click on your app.json file, scroll down until you see your Android object. It's right here. It should be inside of the expo object. Find an Android object. Check to see if there's a package key inside of that object. There currently is not one in mine. So I'm going to say comma and paste the example that was in the native notify instructions right here. This can be named whatever you want. Normally you would name it something like com dot your org name dot your app name. So I'll say uh, native notify. I'll call this my new app. So whatever you name this package here in this Android object, you'll want to copy that. And it's very important that this is something unique because it's not allowed to match another package ID on Firebase. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, come back to Firebase and paste that right there. So again, it needs to perfectly match this Android package name here needs to perfectly match whatever you put here or push notifications won't work. You can give it a nickname if you want. I'll just again say my new app, click register app. The instructions say as you're creating your Firebase Android app, download the Google service.json file and place that in the root of your Expo app. So after the app is registered, this should pop up. You want to click download Google services.json. I'm going to drag and drop this here so it's easily accessible. And if you've already downloaded Google service JSON files before, you might see a number there. You'll want to make sure to rename the file to just be Google services.json without a number in it, or it won't work. Come back to your app, drag and drop that Google services.json file to the root of your project. If you come back to your native notify instructions, it says in your app.json file, add this key value pair to the Android object. So you'll want to copy this, the Google services file key, come back to your app.json file, you can put a comma after package and just paste that right there within the Android object. Make sure to paste this Google services file with this right here so that it knows that the Google services.json file is in the root of your app. Another note is for step six, it says as you're creating your Firebase Android app, skip the add Firebase SDK step. So if you click next here, it'll say add Firebase SDK. You can skip this because in Expo managed workflow, they set all this up for you. So you don't have to worry about this. Just click next, click continue to console, and that will take you back to your project overview page. And you should notice your app is there now. Mine is there. Mine my new app. Step seven, click the gear icon to the right of project overview in the top left of the screen and then click project settings. And so that's over here. Project overviews right here. Click this gear icon, then project settings. And this next part is the update that I was telling you about. June 10th, 2024, Google will stop allowing Firebase legacy server keys to work. You will have to update to version V1 by June 10th, 2024, or your your push notifications will stop working. Until then, you can still use the Firebase legacy key if you want, but I highly suggest you use Firebase version one messaging. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So this next step, how to get your Firebase V1 messaging information. Step one is to get your Firebase project ID on this project settings page that can be found down here. Project ID, just copy that value right there. Paste that into this input right here. Step two, you need to get your Google 
Cloud Access Token JSON file. You can do that by clicking this link here. You'll want to make sure you're logged into the correct Gmail account. You should see in your service accounts, you should see the new project that you just created. If your project happens to not be here, which it should, but if it doesn't, if it's not there, you can click this select project button, go to all, and then you should be able to find your project there. You can search for it and it should be there in the all tab. Go ahead and click on your project. You can click on that here or you can come back here and click on it. Then it says to click on the three dot actions menu on the right. So here's my service account. There's an actions menu right here. I'll make this a little bigger so you can see it. Where it says actions under there, there's a three dot menu. Click that. Come down here here to manage keys. That should take you to this page here. Next, it says you'll want to click add key, then create new key. So let's do that. Click add key, which is right here. Create new key. Next, it says make sure you pick the JSON object and click create. So I'm going to make sure to say JSON. Click create. That should download the JSON file that you need. You can drag that to your desktop so it's easily accessible. Come back here. You want to click this. This is like a big button to upload your JSON file, click that. You can go to desktop to your recents and find your file, or you can go back to downloads to find your file. Find the right JSON file that you just downloaded, upload it, then click save Firebase V1 information. You should see an update successful appear on the screen. And now you're officially, officially done. You're ready to send Android production push notifications. And another thing to note is if you follow these instructions here, you can skip this how to get your Firebase legacy server key. And it says so right here. If you've already followed these instructions here, you can skip this section. You don't need a Firebase legacy server key anymore because again, June 10th, 2024, the Firebase legacy server keys won't work anyway. So you'll want to just follow this Firebase V1 messaging method. Then if you come down here, it'll tell you how to test out your push notifications. Android push notifications will stop working in Expo Go after you've put all this information here. From then on out, you're going to have to test out your push notifications on an actual phone, on a natural device. The way you can do that in development is by creating an APK file, or you can just go ahead and publish your app to the Google Play Store and push notifications will work in your app on the App Store. I'm going to show you how to create an APK file in case you want to create an APK file to test out your push notifications. So you'll want to follow this link right here, this one right here, click on that link. This shows you how to build an APK file that can be used on an actual phone to test your push notifications. So in your EAS.json file, you'll want to copy this, just copy all of this code here. Come here, you should have an EAS.json file if you've created an EAS build. If you don't, you'll want to create a new EAS.json file, but I already have one. Open up your file delete everything that's in it and just paste everything that was in this link right here. Paste that there. Then all you have to do to create an APK file is copy this, copy this right here, EAS build dash P Android dash dash profile preview. Come back to your terminal, paste that there, click return and just click yes to everything. And if you haven't already, you'll want to make sure to NPM install dash dash global EAS dash CLI or this EAS command won't work. But if you have installed the EAS dash CLI, this command will work. So you'll need to make sure to do that. I'll make sure to put all these links in the description below. Once your build is finished, it should send you a link like this in your terminal and it should end with a dot APK. To test this out, you can copy this link, email that to yourself, click on the link in your Android phone on an Android phone that you want to test out your push notifications on, install the app, make sure to say yes if it asks for permissions to send push notifications. Then you can come back to your native notify portal, click the send button, you can send yourself a push notification and it should appear on your phone 
phone. If you properly downloaded your APK file app and opened it up, it should at that point appear on your phone. And that is how you set up push notifications for Android using nativenotify.com. I highly suggest you use nativenotify.com for your Expo push notifications. If you try to do everything yourself, it will probably take over a month just to figure out how to do everything. I know your time is valuable. At nativenotify.com, we've worked really hard to make sure this is as simple as it possibly can be. You'll be up and running in under 30 minutes. And once you reach 11 subscribers, pricing after that is only $25 a month. So you'll end up saving so much money by using nativenotify.com. If you think about how much your time is worth, I'll just give you a brief overview of all the other features available with nativenotify.com. Once you set up production push notifications, you can send pictures with your push notifications here. You can also schedule push notifications to be sent in the future on this screen here. This screen here is your notification inbox. If you go back to your documentation, the next tab says notification inbox. The way you can think of this is like in a Facebook app, there's a little notifications icon you can click on to see all of your notifications that have been sent to you. That's basically what this is. It's a simple way to create an inbox in your app that collects all the push notifications that have been sent to the user. And so any notification on this screen will be inside of the notification inbox. You can learn more about that by clicking this video here. There's also something called Indie Push Notifications. This will show you how to send push notifications to individuals. And I'll be making another video about this soon. So you'll want to make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when that video comes out. What we just went through will allow you to send push notifications to all of your users at once. Indie Push Notifications let you send push notifications to individuals. So to single users, this really opens up so many new features with Native Notify. There's an Indie notification inbox you can set up. The way this works is Indie notification inboxes will collect all the push notifications that you send to all of your users, and it will collect the push notifications that have just been sent to each individual user. And a cool thing with the Indie push notification inbox is users have the ability to delete messages from their notification inbox. So there's just a lot more control over the notification inbox. The group notifications, group push notifications, and follow push notifications all are basically how you can set up a bit of a social network using nativenotify.com. People can follow each other or groups and send each other push notifications. You can also set up basic analytics in your app. Once you set up your analytics, they will show down here on this screen here, it'll show you how many users are visiting your app every day. And it'll show total views and unique views. Last thing I wanted to show you is this here. If you click here where it looks like three people, you can set up what are called topic groups. Once you have indie push notifications set up, you can create what are called topic groups. So say this is a church app or something like that. I'll say men's Bible study. Click create topic group. From then you can click this, show your topic group APIs. You can then subscribe your users users to that group. So say just a certain amount of your users, if they're men, you want to subscribe them to the Bible study group. You can do that using the subscribe a user to a topic group post API. And after you've subscribed users to a topic group, once at least one topic group is created, you can scroll to the top of this screen and you'll notice this has been created. And just to make this a bit more clear, I'll create another one, women's group. And now up here, you'll notice you you can send push notifications to a group. So say you want to send push notifications to the men Bible study group. You can click that and it will appear right here. And you can say uh, Bible study time Friday at 8 a.m. Uh, and there's other options. You can send a picture with it, a data object with it, and send push notification that way. So this is how you could manually send your push notifications to that topic group. If you want to do it programmatically, you can come back here to your APIs. You can get all the Indie sub IDs subscribed to that topic group using this API. Then you can loop through all of those and send individual Indie push notifications using the Indie push notification API in the Indie push documentation. If you have any questions about Native Notify, post your questions in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.